I used to drink a bottle of wine every night, but I was drinking away my neural pathways. I was in a wheelchair and struggled to walk, talk and eat. I gave up drinking in 2020 and retrained my neural pathways. I started to walk, podcast, ride my can and Rika. I even wrote a book. I'm now vlogging and travelling around the world, promoting positive recovery with sobriety and disability. I hope you enjoy my journey. Well, good morning and hello from familiar territory. I'm back home. I've been here about three days now. I stayed at my son's for a couple of days because, um, well, just because I didn't really want to come here in the middle of the night because it is a mobile home. It's been empty for two months. It can get a bit cold and damp. But also, it's it's quite hard for me coming back home with my grief. This is where I really, really, really miss Andy. And when I'm travelling, I can kind of not pretend it hasn't happened, I know it's happened, but I have this travelling and vlogging persona which I can remove myself from some of the reality and the stark reality that faces me when I come home. And then it takes me a while to adapt to being here and I was saying to my good friend Paula, I'm just kind of ignoring it and she went, no, you're not ignoring it, you're just putting your feelings to one side until you feel ready to deal with them and that you can deal with them and it's getting better each day as it always does i think since andy passed we're coming up to a year now on the 22nd of april i think the longest i've spent here since he's passed was um over the christmas period i was here for six weeks and i'm probably going to be here for about five-ish weeks i think before i head off on my next lot of travels but before i go on about that i'm just going to quickly recap on my last lot of travels which was amazing and if you missed any of it it's all there just scroll down i've been to australia i've been to bali and i've been to america coast to coast across america which was pretty cool i've got some photos actually of what i'd done before and what i've done after and i'll um i'll put that up just in the, the zones that i went across in america and there's much more that i want to go back in and do in america um, I'm hoping to do that next May, next year. I'm also hoping to go back to Australia at the end of October for the Jacaranda Festival. So that would be really good. And I might sort of kind of stop somewhere on the way or on the way back. Not sure yet. Watch this space. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I met up with 13 fantastic sober warriors on my adventures across Australia and America. I met up with my school friend Julia, who I've known since we were 11. She moved away to Australia when she was 17. And um, yeah, we, we, we had five weeks together, which was amazing. In her hometown, we went up to the Sunshine Coast where it rained all the time, of course. And then we went to Bali together as well. So that was really great fun. We had the best of times. But unfortunately, she's gone to a bit of a fibro fair flare now. So I'm really sorry to hear that, Julia. And I hope you get better soon. Sending you tons of healing love. Um, we're, we're very good at booming and busting, I think. When we've got chronic illnesses, we tend to boom and bust. Or I do. I know. I'm not very good at pacing. So that's something I've really focused on since I've got home, is just to pace. Just do little and often. Be kind to myself. Allow myself to settle gradually back into home and to home life. Um, I put off even starting Bumblebee until yesterday. So I left it a couple of days since I was here. Because I was like, what if she doesn't start? Then I've got to get the charger out and charge her up. But she started first time. She's a good girl. And I was going to go for a ride today. Mostly because I need to get a little bit of shopping. I did get some with Jack on Saturday. So that's okay. Um, but it's really wet and windy now. It's been really sunny uh, the last few days. But it's wet and windy today. So I'm going to give that a miss. So I don't have a car. I've spent all my car money on flying around the world. But that's fine. It is what it is. I've had fun. So as I say, I met up with my school friend Julia and her lovely family as well. Her dad, who I haven't seen since we were 17 when, when she emigrated. And I'm 59 now. Um, and I saw met her beautiful granddaughter Lily and saw her daughter Rhiannon again. So that was great. We saw some of their friends. We went exploring. We went to Bali. Um, and it's been great not only meeting my friends, my sabre friends, who I've known for nearly four years online. So don't ever doubt those online connections. They really are genuine and true. And these ladies and one man, Drifter, and then the, the family of people as well, they've known more about me than the other people in my life because I've shared so much in my sabre journey with them. And uh, it, so it was just like 
meeting old friends and it was amazing we had the best of times as i say scroll down you can see all of our adventures it was really good fun and i remember saying to drifter i went out for a ride in drip with drifter in his truck because that's something andy really wanted to do so i took some of andy with us and we went out for a ride in Drifter's truck. He got an extra special run just for me so me and Andy could go out with him. And then we sprinkled some of his ashes that day on his ground. So that was really good. But I remember saying to Drifter that there is um, every part of my body wants to be sober now. There's not one part of my body that wants to drink. And that's where I'm finding it quite strange is how to acknowledge and accept how something that was my go to for years and years and years and years and years, my whole life revolved around when I could get my next drink, how now actually the thought repulses me. But I know that we can't get complacent. And this really proved true to me when I was at JFK Airport. I had 13 hours to wait until my flight back to Heathrow. And the attic voice came. There was, I went up to the food bar and there was a bar, um, there was a bar there, an alcohol pizza and alcohol bar. And my voice was going, well, you could just drink away the next 13 hours. Where did that come from? Well, from deep beyond, because I've pushed my attic voice quite a long way back, but it came. And I did have a little bit of a debate on myself. And I did have to play the tape forwards, which is my go-to, just play the tape forwards. You know, it wouldn't be that just one blast. I'd then be straight back on it. I'd be drinking on the plane. I'd be drinking when I got home. I'd be right back to square one. So it didn't win. I got in the lift and got away from the bar quickly. And then it started saying, well, perhaps you could go to Dunkin' Donuts and have loads of sugar and gluten, which really hurts me because I'm intolerant of gluten. It ulcerates and inflames my bowel in the past. So that's not good. Um, and I'm three months off of sugars. And my, my saying for that is not another bite if you want to catch that flight. I have to admit, I did have um, a gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan chocolate brownie on the plane. It tasted very sugary. So I have kind of caved a bit, but I've kept my sugar-free running because I haven't caved. I haven't gone on the normal binges. I haven't done the thing that I'd usually do. It's like, oh, well, I've done that. Might as well just go on a binge now. So that's good. But I am trying to fight the cravings now. So this is a really good solution. So this is almond milk coffee with a spoon of cocoa in and a little bit of stevia. And it really fixes that chocolate fix. Yeah, that's done it. That's really good. Anyway, I, I diversify all over the place, don't I? You know what I'm like. Anyway, I had a great time. It was amazing. Thank you to everyone that put me up looked after me, hosted me, because actually the only bit I had to do on my own with Chicago was getting um, off the train at Chicago, finding my way to the hotel, where I was robbed by the cabbie who charged me nearly $50 for that taxi fare that should have been 15 So I lost me $37 there, you know, but hey, I got there safe. I was warm, I was dry. You know, what do you do? It's like I said in my vlog, what do you do? It's an illegal cabbie. I didn't realise it was in there. I asked him what the price was. He told me they all ran on, ran on metres. So I got in a couple of minutes later. I'm like, well, where's his metre? I asked him. He showed me it was on his phone. And then he charged me nearly $50. The doors are locked. What do we do? So I say, I'm not going to pay you or ring 911 because obviously you're a legal cabbie. With him driving around wherever with me locked in the cab, would you just pay it and get out? I paid it, I got out, I was safe. That was the most important thing. I had two days in Chicago on my own, had to find my way back, but I got a, the hotel person to get a cab for me back to the um, station and then went off to Cincinnati. So apart from that, and apart from having to get myself from LaGuardia Airport in, um, to JFK in New York, I've had people help me all the way. I have special assistants wherever I go. Um, I've had people pick me up house me home me look after me cook for me take me out for meals i have managed to pay for a few meals where i've argued and managed to get my card there first you know the americans are wonderful the australians are wonderful as well if you go as a guest to their house you are their guest and they they expect to, to pay for you I, I was trying to explain in england it's very different if, if you come as a guest in england um and you're putting someone up then you kind of expect your guests to treat you a bit as well or is that just me i don't know 
<laughs> but yeah, so there was there was lots of cultural differences. I mean, the, the, the best thing was having to sign for my card. I haven't done that for years and years and years in the UK. But yeah, what I found about the Australians and Americans, they're very, very friendly people, which I knew anyway. They're amazing people. They're, they live in wonderful communities, very, very community minded. I think in England, we've tended to all just spread out and go away, but they're very family, community, supportive and minded, which is wonderful. I really, really liked that. Anyway, uh, what else have I got to say? So lost, things that I've lost. I've got a little list myself, look. I haven't referred to it much yet, so that's good going. I lost a glove. Right, so I lost one of my gloves somewhere. It's gone. I lost another glove for special assistance um, when I got on the special assistance at Chicago at the train station. Um, I lost another one. I only had one glove and I lost that one. And I jumped off the, the thing and picked it up, like the trolley, the cart thing, little golf trolley. Picked it up because the blank said to me, you've, lost, you've dropped your glove. Well, I ended up throwing that out because... It was only one glove that I had because I'd lost the other one anyway. And then when I got back on the car, I'd realised I'd lost my train ticket as well. And I went, I've lost my train ticket. Couldn't find it. But luckily I had a copy on my phone, so that was okay. I lost my hearing aids in Bali. The last time I saw them was the day we were packing up on the table in my hotel room. The same day that the monkey came in and stole my saffron tea from my room because I left my door open. So I think he's got my hearing aids too, because I haven't had them since. So I have to sort that out at some point. Um, Gertie. I lost Gertie. I'm sorry, Linda, if you're watching this, I need a new Gertie. I had Gertie and Bertie. Now, Gertie was a lovely giraffe, a beanie giraffe that she made for me. And she made one for my son, which was Bertie, which was a teddy bear that has long gone. So Linda's granddaughter had leukaemia when she was a child. And she used to, and fortunately is now um, fully in recovery, which is great news. And growing up into a, a beautiful young lady. And um, she used to make these worry bears and worry Gerties for people with little beans in. And she sent one for me for my flights. And I've had it years and years and years and years. And I lost it on one of the flights. I can only hope somebody who really needs Gertie has found it. I've also lost a brooch that my friend Sarah gave me. I lost it before I'd even got to Australia. She only gave it to me a few weeks before. Um, oh, I lost my ring that Julia bought me for my birthday, my dragonfly ring. But I found it again in my, um, my seat thing. It was folded up in there. But I did then lose my other dragonfly ring. Not this one, because that's a tree. But I had a dragonfly ring that I bought on my third Saberversary when the dragonfly then came down in Spain. If you missed that one, go and see that's a spiritual visit in Spain. That was brilliant. This red dragonfly that was just around for nearly three hours dancing around and came to the pool every day I got in. Anyway, that came off on my last flight. And could we find it? Couldn't find it anywhere. Um, on my walking stick. I left my walking stick. Uh, Jamie's in the caravan but that's okay perhaps you can use it it might come in handy um what else oh, I broke two of my bracelets and oh I drove once drove once in the whole trip away when and during that time went off-roading once and hit three curbs sorry drifter but it was Jamie's truck anyway so and she's fine she was with me so she knew all about it um so yes I think that's about it I had an amazing time. It is good to be home. Now I'm home. I was ready to come home and see everybody. If you've watched my vlogs, you would know that when I came, was going to America, I didn't know if I was going to India, coming home, when it was happening, where I was flying from. But when I flew from Bali to Taiwan to get my connecting flight to San Francisco, I couldn't get on the plane until I had an outward flight. So I had to book from out from New York. I don't know why I never wanted to go to New York, but that's where I flew from and that's fine. Um, I had thought it was the 9th of April. Luckily, I took the time to read some of the emails that Virgin Atlantic were sending me and saw that it was the false. Otherwise I would have missed my flight completely. I, um, I am a very, well, I'm not a happy traveler with flying. I love flying. If I could just relax and enjoy it, it's a wonderful experience. But how all this rubbish going through my head? So if you watch any of the flights, you'll see the anxiety management that I did. And then when I got back, I came across this amazing, amazing um, 
Questions and answers. I ate questions debunked, flying questions by a captain of a plane. It's brilliant. I'll tag it in here so you can get the link because it's really good if you're afraid of flying. I've shared it on Facebook as well. It's a really, really good video to watch. So thank you, Mr. Captain. I can't remember your name. I've got a feeling it's Mark something, but I don't know. You know me. Can't remember my own name sometimes. Anyway, I've also put some funnies and some bloopers on down here of our time in Bali and Australia, and I'll do one in America soon as well. And if you want to, um, if you watch regularly, then please subscribe if you haven't already. Please like and share stuff because I really want my vlogs to get out there and help other people. That's what I'd really like to do. I just want to help others. I want to make a difference to somebody's day every day. And the more subscribers I get um, and the more watch hours and the more likes, the more I get control over my YouTube channel. So on some of my videos already, there are adverts and I have absolutely no control over there, them. I have no control of what adverts they are or where they go. And that's a little bit frustrating. But if I get to a certain amount of subscribers, like a thousand, I will have more control of what goes on and where. So that would be good. And I can say I don't want any if I want to. Obviously, I will start on a bit of money then, but that isn't the reason why I'm doing this. It would be nice to get a little bit of money to help me travel more and go and share more. But the main thing is to help other people. It's positive recovery with Karina and it's positive recovery from alcohol or addiction, from disability, with grief and travelling. And the next lot of travel that I have to do is on Bumblebee. I'm riding to Austria at the end of May to do a challenge up a mountain with lots of other can am owners as well. It's going to be a first for me riding abroad on the wrong side of the road. And um, But luckily, I'm going to sail to the Hook of Holland and meet a friend there, Alison. Um, another online friend. I haven't met her in person yet, but I'm going to ride with her. She's on a Riker too, and she lives over in Holland. So she knows the roads, and she's going to lead us over to Austria. And I might have to ride back on my own from that. I'm not sure yet. So I've ordered my panniers to go with that. So I've been on that. I've actually gone on and I've paid. I need to book my campsite. I need to get a 360 camera. I'm going to look into getting one of them, which is fine. I can look into getting one. It's just working out how to use the thing. Mm. Stress, you know me and technology, but I know it's going to give you, the viewer, a better view if I can work it out. But we'll see. I'm also going to get a phone upgrade. I've spoken to Jack about that because my phone is really playing up. That was fun vlogging because you know me, I just vlog with my phone. It's just a girl with a phone. It is about real life. It's about us being perfect, being ourselves. We don't have to have, you know, this perfect life because life isn't perfect. It just is what it is. And that's what this is all about. So... I think I've um, covered most of those things. Uh, I keep getting all these um, entrepreneurs messaging me going, oh, you know, you're making really good content, but you don't get enough viewers, blah, blah, blah. And you need to do more tags. You need to do the SEOs. I haven't got a clue. So if you want to come and help me for free, please do. Because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help everybody else for free. And I'm just going to leave you with um, one of my lost poems, um, Grief. Well, I'm going to do that and then I might stay for my book and see what's in there. <coughs> there. Sorry. I know I'm raw alive and I'm filtered, but I just have to turn it off. I had a bit of a choking fit. You tell about my caffeine this morning as well, can't you? So I'm going to leave you with one of my favourite poems <coughs> in my lost book. And then I might just open this and just do a little chapter, which I have done the audible for last August. But. We haven't edited it yet, so I need to go and see my brother sometime this month and we need to get this edited. Perhaps I'll go down next week if it's free and get that sorted. But I'm just going to read again. We'll meet again of that, I'm sure. And though I should not rush, I know that time is running out. I wish the clocks to hush. For there is more I need to do that you would hold so dear. And then I've lots to tell you when once again we're near. I'll tell you of the starlit nights and know you saw them too. Looking from a different place, but seeing the same view. I'll make you laugh with tales of joy, adventures through and through. I'll dip my toes in crystal seas and bring that back to you. We'll meet again, of course we will, till then sweet time must bend. I have so much to do until 
I see you once again. And I've done a lot of that and a lot of what I'm doing, a lot of my travel is for me, of course, but it's for Andy too. It's the stuff we wanted to do. It's the things we wanted to do. I'm going to find, I think, Austria quite hard because he won't be riding with me. <clears throat> and Scotland. I'm going to do Scotland um, at the end of June and all around July and finish our coast that we set out to do. And that's going to be hard. But life is hard. But Andy is by my side all the time. And the thing that I'm missing is his physical form. But I have to keep reminding myself that when we were in hospital, I looked at him and I said, as awful as this journey is, it's the most intimate and intense journey of my life. And he looked me straight in the eye and he went, I agree. Because spiritually we connected so, so, in, so deeply. And I'm so blessed to have felt that. And I'm so blessed to still feel him all around. And I will see him again one day. But until that time, I have to carry on here. He wouldn't want me sitting in a corner and just doing nothing. Trust me. I want to do that sometimes. I want to do that quite a lot. Um, but I'm going to keep pottering. I'm going to keep pacing until I can get out tomorrow um, in better weather, hopefully. And I'm just going to open this and see if I can get some motivation or inspiration. If you do have this book, if you want to buy this book, you can buy it worldwide on Amazon. There's so much more about it than just alcohol and sobriety. Lots of mental health strategies. It will help with any addiction. It's good. And we're all addicted to something. Mostly our phones. Anyway, I'm going to open it and see where I get. But I suggest you read it from cover to cover and then open it for inspiration. Or just look up the actual headings if you want help with them. Oh, F, F it button. Okay. Pause before you press it. Have you used your toolbox? Reached out and connected? Probably not. Because that's the last thing we do is want someone to talk us out of it, right? But do you really want to press it and release the double effort button? Do you really want to give yourself extra pain for an hour or two of peace? You know that when you sober up, everything will be a whole lot worse than it is right now. And the beast would have won yet again. But you have a choice and it's yours alone to make. Maybe pause and try one of these. The four Ds. Delay, drink water, deep breath, do something. I'm going to add a cheeky fifth. Discuss. What do I need? A blanket, tears, boxing bag, laughter. Does this feed my addiction or my recovery? What would I say to a friend? And that, my friends, is me for now. Ta-ta. I'll see you again real soon.
Here we go. I'm home, baby. I've left you deserted for over nine weeks. Now to see if you start. Let's see. Oh my goodness! What a beautiful girl she is. Smile. Just sit on Bumblebee. Just makes me smile. Just been for a quick blast up the lane and back which was amazing i've paid for austria i'm hopefully going to be riding valison of winchester so really looking forward to that because it's a bit of a long trip over to austria and then to do the the challenge up into the mountains which would be amazing panniers are ordered i just now need to order my 360 camera and then i'll be vlog ready now i just need to get bike fit and rider ready